Hello, I'm Adam O'Neill with the Beaufort County Conservative Republican Party PAC. I'm making this video today to bring up an issue that is so important to all of us, and that's our children. Our schools are having a tough time. Our schools are being run by people who aren't interested in only teaching our kids, but also indoctrinating them. And we've had a situation in our county where this has been going on, and nobody's really done a whole lot about it until our committee decided to get involved. This all started back with COVID. When COVID was taking place, we actually had kids wearing masks, playing basketball, playing different sports. It was just insane what was going on. I was part of a group that put a protest together about wearing the masks all the time because the carbon dioxide is actually bad for the kids to keep inhaling from their own, you know, their own breathing. So anyway, we got involved with that. And when we went to the meeting to protest the COVID masks, I got to see our, our school board and how disrespectful they were to our citizens, how disrespectful they were to our parents, and how they just completely neglected and ignored what the people were bringing to them. And that's a problem. I've been in politics in my life, and I know what it's like to sit behind the table but with the gavel and listen to people in the community. You need to always hear what they have to say, because many times they know things that you may not even know. So anyway, the, the board treated people so badly that I went and checked on how we could do something about it. And I found out that there was a curriculum committee that was put together to help uh, fix the problems that are in our schools. Well, there had to be change. So we found out that the primary for school boards, actually, this was a couple years ago, we found out the primary was in two weeks. So we had two weeks to go find three candidates. We were trying to find four, there were four seats open. We, had, we ended up finding three candidates. We took those three candidates and we ran them hard and all three of them won. So the school board is made up of nine seats, nine districts, and three of them now have conservatives that are true conservatives in seats that will actually vote against all of these, this stuff that's going on in schools and try to fix the schools. But we had three, that means six, were rhinos and Democrats that didn't think there was anything wrong with the schools, didn't think there was anything wrong with all that was going on. So we were successful in the election. Once again, we got three people elected. Um, what we found when we started to get some access to what was going on in the schools, we learned that the real issues, number one, bullying. The kids are being bullied at school, many of them. It's a sad situation. We've had an 11-year-old P.S. Jones attacked, stabbed in the head with pencils by two girls in the pickup line. We've had other children sent home for the rest of the school year because they were a victim of bullying, and the superintendent left the bullies in school. Now think about that for a minute. So your kids at school, they're getting bullied, and the superintendent says, take your kid home for the rest of the year, and we're going to leave the bullies in school. That's the kind of things going on with bullying. We've had suicides from bullying. It is a major problem. Our school board currently is doing nothing about it. Nothing. There are no programs. There's no task force on bullying. There's nothing going on. We've got to change that. We've got to change that. That's why we're in this for these children and for them to have a safe place to go to school. We have teachers that are being intimidated. The superintendent tells the teachers, you work for the Beaufort County school system. He's letting you know that if you don't do what you're told to do, we'll take you from Bell Haven and move you to Aurora or from Northside and move you to Snowden. So they'll move you around. The, the teachers have a lot of pressure on them from the administration. We should not be. The teachers should be allowed to teach. Common core math was another problem that we saw really quick. If you want to know why the young lady or young man at Food Line can't count your change, the reason is common core math. This is a math that is extremely difficult. You can't teach it to your kid, your kids or grandkids. And a lot of you know what I'm talking about because you've had kids come home with this homework and you can't help them with it. Well, the reason is common core math. We need to go back to traditional uh, teachings of math. We also saw the kids can't write in cursive anymore. They, give, they teach the kids in second grade how to, how to do cursive, and then they never use it. So all through school, the schools let them go without using cursive. That means that kids today, many of them can't read cursive. Now, I don't know how many of you have kids in school, but if you do, you know what I'm talking about. We have even recently had some schools in the county stop giving spelling tests after the second grade. 
Now I ask you, how will you learn spelling without spelling tests? I know when I went to school, the only way I was going to study those words is because I knew I was getting a grade and I had to know the words. Well, that's not happening at some of our schools. Some schools are still doing it. Some aren't. That's a problem. The woke studies that's being pushed on our kids. Please, please understand this is happening in our county. We've had transsexual substitute teachers in our schools. The last one that we know of was at Eastern Elementary in Washington. It was a man dressed up with a wig with makeup on and a dress. That is happening in your county. And that is going to continue to happen and spread if we don't change this board. It's an extremely important, dire situation we're in here. We also have the gender studies. At uh, the early college at Burford Community College, which these are high school students that the uh, school board has influence with, and they have like a memorandum of understanding with the college of what these kids are shown and taught. They, they have been introduced to the gender studies. Let me give you an example here. <clears throat> now, they'll tell you, the school board members will tell you it's not going on. It is going on. They're lying to you. When a school board member comes to you and says there are no gender studies uh, other than two genders going on in the county, they are lying to you. And that I know they know they're lying to you because I've shown them at school board meetings, I've shown this to them. Here is a shot. This is a young lady's laptop. You can see the other students in the background up there. And here's a test question. In every society, there are only two distinct genders. She answered true. If you look at the bottom, she was marked wrong. They are teaching the kids more than two genders at Beaufort County uh, schools. You have to understand that. Do you want this to continue? If you do, you vote for the people who are on the board now because they're not going to do anything about this. If you don't mind uh, men or the boys in the girls' locker room, vote for the people that are there now. There was a concerned citizen that wrote an article here. Let me read it to you real quick. It's called Transgender Studies Come to Beaufort County. <clears throat> North Carolina high school students exposed to gender unicorn to indoctrinate them into queer theory. <clears throat> this is not California. This is not New York. This is Beaufort County, North Carolina. Once again, your school board uh, incumbents are going to tell you this isn't happening. It is happening, and you need to know. That's why I'm doing this video. We're out here, you know, politicking and trying to get these people elected, and we're hearing people say it's not true. It is true. It's 100% true. I'll read this to you quickly. The gender unicorn. In 10th grade, students are typically taught physical, sexual, emotional, Changes that punctuate various life stages, especially adolescence. Lessons often include study of male and female anatomy, physiology, reproductive systems, labor, and birth. Some teachers at Beaufort County Early College High School have adopted an avant garde approach to sex ed. Tenth graders, tenth graders in the county's top school are taught that the concept of biological sex is plain wrong. As a part of BCEC sophomore health class, students receive now famous gender unicorn handouts to indoctrinate them into queer theory. This is happening in Beaufort County. The Marxist ideology rejects traditional gender roles and male and female identities. It promotes the biological contradiction idea that sexuality and gender are fluid and change on a dime. Queer theorists believe that gender is socially constructed, not biologically based. Traditional gender roles are oppressive and thus should be abolished. That's telling you that our kids are being taught trying to get rid of gender identification. <clears throat> the gender unicorn is a tool to illustrate this concept to school children as young as four years old. Educators promote queer theory, teach children that they should be free to choose their own gender identity. These teachers work at normalizing gender confusion and even groom children to experiment with changing their genders. These radical social changes are often done at school and kept hidden from parents. Once again, hidden from parents. A lot of parents don't know about this. You may not know about this. It's going on. It is naive to think that children living in rural areas of the state are immune to being taught Marxist worldviews in schools. Parents should maintain communication channels with teachers, principals, and other parents in their district. 
Only parental involvement and awareness can truly shed, can truly shield children from Marxism, dangerous ideologies like queer theory. There's an article right there that talks about what's going on in the schools. Once again, if you ask the three school board members that are running, they would tell you this is not happening. It is happening. I'm showing you, I'm showing you it's happening. Now this, I, it was hard for me to run this off. This is something new. This is off of a Northside High School student's laptop. They have what's called wallpaper. It's like a screen that's behind whatever you're working on, on a computer, kind of like a screensaver maybe. Well, on our taxpayer bought laptops at our schools, they have LGBT plus wall, wallpaper. So your child can go in to their laptop and pick pictures of girls hugging at the pool, um, you know, suggestive things. And it's LGBT is where it's come from. It's on all your laptops. This is a 10th grader. This is a 10th grade Northside. If you have a 10th grade Northside, I know it's on their laptop, but go check your kid or your grandkid's laptop. This stuff is out here. It's in Beaufort County. Now, once again, these school board members currently will tell you it's not happening. It is happening. Do you think I would be doing this video and taking my time and going to put on a nice shirt? Do you think I would be doing all this if it was not true? We also had a situation, which you need to be aware of, where the school board about a year and a half ago was trying to acquire a social studies and history curriculum called Savas. In this Savas program, there is a lesson. And you can't read this as good because a school board member took a, a snapshot of this and he didn't get it real clear, but you can make it out. If you were here, you could see it. Um, but it says, how will you dispute the church. So this was a lesson that was going to be in the Beaufort County school system for our children to learn. Now, if the lesson, if one lesson is like this, what do you think the rest of the curriculum looks like? Let's talk about school scores for a moment. These school board members have drove our schools in the ground. They are in no way, in no way can an objective person come in and say, that these school board members have done a good job. For example, school scores. We have 13 schools in the county. There are seven schools out of 13 that have a school score of less than 54. Let me say that again. We have 13 schools in the county. There's a scoring system from one to 100 with the state of how well your school's doing. Seven of our 13 schools have scores less than 54. If you were on the school board and you were letting this go on and seven out of 13 schools were below 54, would you run for re-election? I wouldn't. I'd be embarrassed. These people are not embarrassed. They are running for re-election hard as they can. It's a problem. It's amazing to me they're still running. I submit to you, these are the worst school board members in the history of the county, and they have to be replaced. They're allowing our schools to be destroyed. D I mean, do you think if we reelect these people that they're all of a sudden going to turn it around and start working for the children? No, they're not. The people on the board are doing whatever the superintendent tells them. They go to the meetings. They don't have to prepare. They go in there. Whatever the school uh, superintendent says, that's what they do. Here's another thing. The three members of the board are T.W. Allen, Aletha Booth, and Mike Hodges. None of those three board members have kids in the schools. It kind of takes some of your interest out of the schools when you don't have any kids there anymore. All three of our candidates that are running, all three of them have kids in the schools. So they know what's going on. You know, T.W. Allen, who's running the Bellhaven District, even sent his kids outside of his district to school. So instead of his kids going to Northside High School, they went to Washington High School. Why is that? He didn't even send his kids, when he had kids in school, to the school in his district, Northside. What does that tell you? You know, it's important that we pay attention to this school board race. It's important that we understand that we have to vote. Our children are depending on us getting out and voting and getting them some good leadership. Our candidates will start a program 
to stop the bullying in schools. It needs to be in every school, during, on the, in the halls, in the teachers. Everybody needs to be totally on top of the bullying. The bullying is catastrophic inside of our school system right now. It's got to be stopped. For some reason, nobody's doing anything about it. The kids need to have a good environment to, to learn. We also need the teachers to have a good environment to learn. The teachers, as I told you earlier, have been intimidated in many cases. We need them to have a good place to go to work. Our, we need to protect our children from the woke and the CRT that goes on in curriculums these days. We need a board that's going to look at the curriculums and make sure that they're good for the kids and they're not full of politics. Our candidates will also eliminate Common Core math. This should be enough to vote by itself if the bullying doesn't appeal to you. Is getting rid of Common Core math so kids can give change again. So kids learn math. So that parents can help kids with math at home again. We need to get rid of Common Core math. That's something that these are dedicated to do, these candidates. The politics in the classroom need to be taken out. We just had a situation where one of the school board candidates, his daughter was at school and a teacher was talking negative about her father running for school board. Why should a teacher be involved in that? Why should a teacher be intimidating a student because her dad's running for school board? That's the kind of atmosphere we have. We need politics out of school. We need total and complete respect for parental rights. When you come to the school board meeting, the parents should be sitting in the front chairs. Right now, the way the school board works, if you go to a school board meeting, there's nothing but principals and teachers in the front, front two or three rows to watch the board meeting. Then everybody sits behind them. That's not the way it should be. Parents should be front. They should be respected, put up front, and we should be listening to them. And also something that's a big deal is cursive. The kids need to learn cursive. These board members will make sure that throughout the learning process, throughout school, that kids use cursive so they can not only write it, but they can read it. You know, the Constitution has, happens to be written in cursive. It's kind of important they can read cursive. Now, the three races that are up, right now that are up for election, once again, uh, in the Bellhaven area, Tranter's Old Ford area, and the uh, Washington area, those three races, if we were, were to win all three of those, we'll have a situation where we have six out of the nine that are conservatives on the school board. We need that to happen. If we that have that happen, we can immediately start changing things. Melissa Polk, Stacey Davis and David Hudson, if you elect those three people, they will be able to go to work from day one because there will be a majority of conservatives on the school board that can stop all this stuff that's ruining our schools. This is an election of change. You have to get out and go vote. Your vote does matter. The reason for this video is to let you know, number one, that these things are really going on, that we're really having this gender mess come to our county, this bullying is out of control. There's major problems going on. That's one part of the video. But the other part is you got to go vote. You have got to go vote and not you. You've got to talk to your husband or, or talk to your wife, talk to your grandparents, talk to your parents, talk to everyone and get them out to vote. Because we have a chance right now to stop this woke CRT gender study stuff. We have a chance to stop this in Beaufort County right now. We don't have to wait for another election. This will do it. So you need to tell your folks, if you're in the Pamlico Beach, Bellhaven, Punga area, you need to tell your friends about David Hudson. If you're in the Washington area, kind of downtown area, uh, Melissa Polk, you need to tell your friends about Melissa Polk. If you're out towards Old Ford, Trainers Creek area, you need to tell your friends about Stacey Davis because these people have put themselves up for an election to, you know, to catch all the abuse that comes with it in order to help our kids. So it's really important, once again, for everybody to get out and to vote. And if we don't vote, all this woke stuff is coming. Title IX right now has had changes made to it at the federal level where they want the boys to be able to go into the girls' locker room and vice versa, however you identify. That's coming to Beaufort County. 21 states have filed lawsuits about that. North Carolina is not one of them. And I'd like to give you one last thing. This school board is a board that is completely out of touch. One of the best examples is the county attorney. The county attorney for Beaufort County, which is a conservative area, a, you know, all-American area, our 
school board attorney is the chairman of the Durham County Democrat Party. He's one of the most leftist people you could have. And our school board doesn't understand that if you have a leftist attorney, he is going to be giving you leftist advice. So our majority Republican school board has hired a liberal left attorney to represent them and to ask questions of. So everything is screwed up in the schools. Once again, I'm going to say, you've got to go vote. Please go vote. The presidential election, all that stuff's important. But you have a chance in Beaufort County right now to change and to save our schools. So I beg you, please go vote. And remember the names of David Hudson, Stacey Davis, and Melissa Polk. Thank you for your time.